Listen to Tom. Listen to Tom. Here comes Tom. Tom. Anybody out here that is going through a situation where somebody's holding you back, just bounce. I just don't understand why women do this. Do which? Want to hold a guy hostage. I just hate the fact that you're spewing forth your nonsense over the airways and that my son is addicted to you. Hey, listen, I'm a special needs um, kindergarten teacher. Uh-huh. <laughs> Darling, if you have special needs, I'll be right over. Because <laughs> I've got a special weapon. I would like to let your audience know, Father Knows Best. I've been an avid listener for the last two years. I regard myself as a gentleman, and I like the way you operate. Now I'm going to try and live my life by your mantra. You put up with these people on a day in and day out basis, and they just won't quit on you. They don't get it. They, it's like they don't get the concept that Tom Likas is a genius, you know. You're well-educated. You know what you're talking about, you know, and, and these people just don't get it. Tom, to say I hate you gives you entirely too much credence. That's like saying I hate a handicapped, mentally challenged child, okay? So, I don't so, hate you. So you think I'm a retard? You. you say, you know, you go out and, and you get sex, and I have to pay for it. Yeah, and why, why should we you, have to pay you? You think having dinner with a girl, you automatically get sex. So what is up with that? Besides that, that just, you know, increases well, I've solved that problem. I have solved the problem. I told the guys don't have dinner with women. That will solve you know, the problem. I'm not going to have dinner, take him out for drinks. My son listens to you, and I'll tell you, when I want to get agitated, when I want to rev up for an argument with my husband, I listen to you. And that revs me up, man. I'll tell you what, you get me going. I started banging this chick, and I didn't know at that time that she had uh, mental problems. <laughs> so, and like, you didn't know while she had sex with you. Wasn't that a clue? Hey. Hey. I was wondering uh, about your KY jelly. What were you wondering? Well, because I figure you must have a lot of it since you don't like women. Well, darling, that's because I was with your postmenopausal self, and uh, you had needs. I want to thank you for telling all these guys out here what's really going on and how to save them time, money, and trouble. You're absolutely right, and I need to thank you for saving all the souls that I don't even know. Just thank you. Well, darling, you have not been spending time studying your competition. There's plenty of it out there, and they're giving it away for free. Ladies, don't give it away for free. I don't care if you're a lady. Just get, get if you have a vagina <laughs> and it's open all night, I'm in. Uh-uh, something is really wrong with you. So you have anything that's really got four legs and a vagina, right? And, well, do you have four legs? Do you know where MySpace is located? Uh, no. Between my left thigh and my right thigh. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Tom. You're right. I gotta say thanks because since I've been listening to you for the last couple months, I've made a lot of decisions and changes. But um, I think I need a little bit more advice. Uh, I don't know what you've got there in front of you, but basically, I've got a kid. Um, I'm like Benny Crocker. I've got a whole. Uh, I've got a box of index cards, like little recipe cards here. All right. When you call in, I I just go thumb through these files here and come up with a pre. Uh, Fabricated answer. I mean, for all intensive purposes, I've got everything laid out here. From Dallas, Texas, it's Flash Friday. No way. No way. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likens. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Flash Friday. Coming to you from Dallas, where we are here for our friends at Live 105.3. We're here for the big Live 8 event that is happening tomorrow. 
I'm going to broadcast from Live 8 tomorrow. I'm going to do a live broadcast just for DFW tomorrow at 4 o'clock Central Time, which is 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern. Now, we'll only be heard on Live 105.3. But if you want to uh, listen to the broadcast because you're a fanatic listener, you want to hear a live broadcast of uh, of my own tomorrow, you can go to Live1053.com and hear it. Or you can go to uh, CBS Radio on AOL and uh, uh, go to K. L L I K L L I or Live One O Five Three or any of the other of uh, ways the station is referred to. Uh between four and six central time tomorrow. So if you're here in Dallas, all you need is a radio. Just turn it on at four o'clock and I'll be there doing a show just for Dallas Fort Worth. And then uh if you are a fanatic listener and you want to listen to us online, you can. Live1053.com. Couldn't make it any easier. Another steamy summer day here in Dallas. We had lunch at Bone Daddy's with our friend uh, Tommy Haybeam. And his show Stag is uh, leaping into syndication all over the country. In fact, I think it starts in L.A. Saturday night, which is great. Good to see Tommy. That bone daddy, man. I mean, you can't beat it. We're going back tomorrow. It's that good. Just killer, killer barbecue. I think we're going to have those wings tomorrow. They had these uh, barbecued uh, chicken wings. You can only eat so much. You know, you go to this place and... Uh, you know, there's the rack of ribs with that unreal barbecue sauce on it and the brisket and the the ribeye where they like kind of infuse it with all the barbecue sauce and spices, which is crazy. And then someone at our table, Limo George, he had the uh, plate of barbecued chicken wings. I think they had the barbecue sauce. Oh, but... That put us away for the rest of the day. We're done. We're just uh, waiting for the Shiner box to get cold. That's it. We love Texas. I'm telling you what. <laughs> we, uh, we love it. Anyway, here we are on this Flash Friday. Doesn't matter where we are. Your headlights are going on wherever you may be. Headlights on. I might tell you that, um, there's only uh, today and then two more Flash Fridays left for the season. That's it. The last one is the Friday of Labor Day weekend, and then we put this thing away till next year. So this is your chance right now to uh, turn the headlights on wherever you might be. Come on, show your loyalty to the show. Turn your headlights on right now. And ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, you know what to do. Show us your rack. Show us your cans. We flash you, you flash us. Hang them out the window, press them against the glass, pop them out the sunroof. You can display them off the back end of the flatbed. Any way you want to do it. Let's get a look at those jugs, girls. Come on. If you see a nice pair of cans, call us right away and report to us. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's 1-800-5800-866. Ladies, if you've got a pair of cans you would like to uh, to show to us, if you'd like us to see your cans, maybe there aren't enough headlights on uh, where you are, maybe there aren't any headlights on where you are, maybe you've just decided to uh, park yourself somewhere and show them off to whoever drives by, call us and tell us where we can see your cans and we'll come over and take a look. Come on, you know you want this kind of attention. Call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Lyka Show. Anything goes, anything at all. Some of the weird things happening in the news. Donald Trump is buying Ed McMahon's house and leasing it back to him. Now, if you look more into this story, 
What actually happened was, according to the Los Angeles Times, uh, the, the realtor for Ed McMahon flew to New York and made what they, what they called an impassioned plea. So this was not Donald Trump's idea. The realtor from Hilton and Highland flew to New York and essentially, it seems, begged Donald Trump to do this. And uh, Donald Trump's stated reason for doing this is because he grew up watching Ed McMahon on TV. Which is not a good reason for doing anything. But we all know the real reason Donald Trump is doing this is because it gets more attention for, that's right, Donald Trump. That's why he's doing it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Other uh, things going on in the news? The fellow plays Daryl on The Office. You know, The Office is my favorite TV show. Apparently back in June, and I don't know how this story escaped the purview of uh, TMZ and the usual suspects. I guess Perez Hilton was still uh, looking for the uh, the corpse of uh, Adolf, uh, not Adolf Hitler, Fidel Castro, same number of letters. <laughs> Perez Hilton has the same number of letters as well. Five letters of the first name, six letters of the second name. It's true. Yeah, but Perez Hilton is still out looking for Fidel Castro's corpse. But anyway, he was uh, apparently arrested in Culver City and charged with possession of cocaine and meth. Going to police, there was quite a little party going on in that car. So that story just uh, showed up today. Very nice. And now, uh, People Magazine cover story. Elizabeth Edwards. Oh, yes, talking about her incurable cancer and now the... Of course, you know, when you have cancer, the last thing you need is stress. My dad died of cancer, and I know of several people who have battled cancer. And stress, depression, sadness is the last thing you need. It says here in People magazine that Elizabeth Edwards experienced excruciating anguish. After her husband uh, confessed to an affair, excruciating anguish. That's always good for a cancer patient. You know, you're on that chemo and radiation. Your bones and your teeth become brittle. Anywhere you move, you might break a hip or break an ankle or break a leg. And then you find out your uh, husband is running down the hallways of the Beverly Hilton, running to the bathroom to hide from the paparazzi. <laughs> Gotta love that. Got to love that. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff we've talked about this week. Lots of stuff that uh, we did not get into. Maybe you'd like us to get into it. You can call us here on Wide Open Telephones. Talk about anything that's on your mind. Anything at all. Did you see that while Hulk Hogan's wife is waiting for the final outcome of their divorce, she's been awarded $40,000 a month in vagina money. $40,000 a month. $40,000 a month. Boy, oh boy. Hulk, why'd you get married? Why? Why? Anyway, it's wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything you uh, heard us talk about this week, anything we left out of the mix. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not the tool of ignorance over there at the screening post, uh, we'll make sure you do not get on the air. Listen, now all you have to do is dial in. 1 800 like this. Tom, Tom. 5 800 Tom. Like this. Like this. 866. Tom, like it. Like this. Tom. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom, I just got blast. Where? Road on my way home from work, and here comes this hot Asian girl in a 2003 to 2005 Infinity G35, and she just showed me her cans. I love that. It was awesome, How, Tom. Thanks to uh, you, Tom. Uh, did she have nice cans there, John? Yeah, it was like a nice pickup. They weren't the biggest, but it was awesome, Tom. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show from Dallas. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. 
Monday, we return to the fallout shelter in the back of a back lot of a movie studio. We're not allowed to mention. That's right. 1-800-5800-TOM. An email from Dan comes in and says, Tom, love your show. Been a listener since your early days in L.A. Hell, I made a decision never to get married back then. Glad to see you came around. He says, I think I heard you say, for all intensive purposes, he says, should be all for all intents and purposes. I don't think so. This was in a commercial, and I read it. And I was assured by the station that this copy had been approved, so there's no doubt that this is correct. They don't put wrong stuff in there. Thanks, though, Dan. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I'm a proud, and I don't say this facetiously, you know, my dad was uh, in the newspaper business for 43 years before all my time in the radio business. Yeah, it's about three quarters of a century in the advertising business. And trust me when I tell you, I'm a proud, proud member of the advertising community. And I believe everything I read. This is Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? It's going great. Okay, uh... Listen, I was listening to you one time, and you were talking, I forget what we were talking about, but you were talking about Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh, and you said that those guys really have no power. That's right. Okay. I mean, now, I mean about the only power they have is to get tables at good restaurants, which I have also. Uh, they have the power to, uh, uh, you know, get uh, good concert tickets. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that if uh, Sean Hannity wants to sit in the front row of a Charlie Daniels concert, he's there. Yeah. But uh, other than that, these guys have no power. They're radio personalities. They just do a radio show. It's no big deal. Yeah. Uh, but the, at the same time, though, I also hear you say all the time that the reason that you get laid all the time is because you have money, power, and fame. Right. So do you have power? But I don't claim to have the power to change an election or to get anybody elected. I mean, keep in mind, Rush Limbaugh spent eight or more years uh, trying to keep people from voting for Bill Clinton. How well did he do? I'm waiting for your answer. I said not very well. That's right. So where's the power? agree with you that they have no power i, I have the power i have i have the power to get women into bed and that's because i've got money and fame but that's nothing like getting a president elected no power and since i did essentially the same thing you do i was wondering why you had power i'm sure i'm sure if sean hannity were not a happily married man with children that he would also have the power to get women into bed. <laughs> What's that? Your phone is lousy. That I, I bet anybody who's got fame and power has the power to get the woman into bed. Well, that's the point I'm making. But don't ever believe that a radio personality can change the political opinions of a country or can get anybody elected, ever. Oh, yeah. yeah, I already I already knew that. Like I said, I was just wondering why they didn't have power and you did. But no, but now I've specified what kind of power we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was just that was where I misunderstood you. That's all. And I have the power to get a good table at a restaurant. I think. Well, you, I, what's that? You what? I said, I, I think it might be intents and purposes. <laughs> no, it, I, no or, it can't be. It was in the copy. And I specifically went back to the station and I said, is this, has this been checked over? Is this, is this correct? And they said yes. 
Yeah, well, th- that doesn't mean... Now, who am I going to believe? CBS Radio or you, a mere listener? I see. I see things on the little blurbs on the bottom of MSNBC and CNN, and you know when they have those little ticker crawlers and stuff. Right. I see misspelling in there all the time. So no, it, it's probably you. It's probably not them. No, no, I know it's misspelled. I'm a very good speller, so I know when I see things that aren't misspelled. If I you were such a good speller, you'd be over there at MSNBC typing out the crawl. You wouldn't be sitting home watching it. I lived in New York, man. <laughs> well, that explains it. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Armando, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, Tom, I just want to say that uh, you bringing up uh, Edward's affair is pretty low for even your show. You know, right now... Did he have uh, an affair? Did he have an affair? You know, it's did, a private. Did John it's, Edwards it's have an affair with Riel Hunter? Did John Edwards have an affair with Riel Hunter? Yes or no? Yes, he did. Did John Edwards call Nightline himself and say, "I want to come on and talk about my affair with Riel Hunter"? Yes. Do you or remember? No? Yes, and he apologized. Yes, for it. but he but he called and said that he had the affair and wanted to come on and talk about it. Isn't that right? Yeah, he did. So why don't I have the right to talk about it? You know. Maybe right now. Okay, he said what he had to say, and he apologized for it. Can't that be enough? Can't you just well, say, you know what? Maybe it is for him. Uh, that would be very expedient for him. Wouldn't that? Well, couldn't you just say that though? Maybe the guy is a good guy for coming on and uh, apologizing. No, he only came on because the National family. Enquirer smoked him out. He didn't come on to do the right thing. He came on because the National Enquirer and Fox News Channel were, were following him down the hallways of the Beverly Hilton, where he went into the men's room to hang out, to, to hide out. The Enquirer is a blood-sucking, uh, shark type of Was it accurate? magazine. Was it accurate? Maybe on this one occasion, but they should No, have no, it's accurate. It's accurate on. damn near most of the time. The New York Times called the National Enquirer the Bible of O.J., Back during the O.J. Simpson, uh, uh, before the trial, when all the stuff was going on, and then when the trial was going on, the New York Times called them the Bible of O.J. They're a, they're a sick, slanderous type of paper, and they should be run name, out of name, name one slanderous thing that's been in the National Enquirer in the last 20 years. I'm you know, listening. Right now, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have the papers right in front oh, of you me. Oh, you don't have it right in front of me. Yes, I know, because you can't even think of one example. It's filth. That's what it is. But no, 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 but you can't think of one example of slander. You, and you, in you, fact, you, there is no slander in, in a newspaper anyway. That's called libel. Yeah, libel. Whatever, whatever you want to call that. Six. I call it. It's what the it's what the dictionary calls it. And I did not call the National Enquirer libel. In uh, fact, I know, said to you, there is no, there is, there is no libel in it. This is also another reason why uh, you shouldn't bring it up, uh, because maybe John Edwards is trying to get back with his wife, is trying to uh, make his marriage well, the, work. Why is he going on Nightline? Family together. Why is he going on Nightline? Why, why according to uh, reports I saw today, is Riel Hunter getting payments? She's getting from payments. Uh, John Edwards' pack because of all because of these uh, magazines, the uh, tabloids that are no, no. The up. payments are coming from John Edwards' pack. It was on CNN today. Why is she getting payments? You know, again, uh, maybe I'm the, waiting for your answer. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All I could tell you You're not is sure. That, don't you think that's suspicious? You know, again, don't you think that they might be working now out that, the that, No, no, don't answer a question with a question. Yes or no, do you think that is suspicious? If it's true, it might be. It was on CNN today. Well, you don't believe is CNN filth too? Do you? Well, wait, well, do you believe any news media at all besides press releases from John Edwards? Well, um, well, yeah, some some of them are. You Which know, ones? Some of them are true. Which ones? Uh, <laughs> like the like the fighting going on in Georgia. That's true. Like no, no. Which true. which news organizations tell the truth? I'm waiting to hear. Uh, C-SPAN is pretty accurate. Uh huh. Well, that's not a news organization. All they do is show what's happening. They do not. Uh, have a news gathering organization. Um, sometimes uh, ABC Nightly and uh, NBC Nightly. ABC, yeah, well, guess what? They're also talking about John Edwards' affair. 
Okay, well, like I said, if it's true, then, yeah, it would be... A it little... is true. John Edwards said it was true. I just think that... that how much, how much think... evidence do you need? John Edwards said that I, John Edwards, was having an affair. How much truer can it get? Okay, I understand. I understand that. But Who's lying about that, John maybe? Edwards having an affair with Riel Hunter while his wife was battling terminal cancer? Who... You tell me. Is that not true? Of course it's true. Yeah, but wouldn't you say that their marriage is more important? Uh, no, to try no. To together? What's a, you know what's Good important? Thing. Having grist for the mill. Yeah. You see, this is the reason why marriage doesn't work out for you. Why? Because John Edwards has affairs while his wife has cancer? No, because you you drag people's mud through. I mean, you drag people's reputation. I didn't call. Mud. I didn't call Nightline and ask to come on and say that I had an affair. John Edwards did that. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is that now that it's already fit, now that it's already said, you got to keep bringing it and keep putting it. It's not it done people. yet. Now yeah. I want to know why, why, why Riel Hunter, the woman that John Edwards is having the affair with, I want to know why she's still getting paid. Why would you want to know that? It's well, what if I, what if I had been, let me ask you this question. What if I had been a contributor to John Edwards political action committee because I believed in John Edwards and I thought he ought to get elected? And then I find out that John Edwards' mistress is getting payments from the contributions that people like me made. You think I don't have a right to know why that money's being paid to John Edwards' mistress, who he was stooping while his wife was uh, going through chemotherapy? I'm going to tell you something right now. I have contributed to John Edwards' campaign through the DNC. And you're happy believe... to have John Edwards' mistress get money. You're happy to have that happen, no, uh, right? What I'm... No, I'm saying maybe somebody made a mistake. Some oh, a mistake. Timely. Well, why won't they tell mistake. you? Well, because I'm not trying to dig into people's closets and pull out skeletons. Oh, like, I see. But this and, is your and, money. And, you put the money in there. And again, but again, this is the re this goes back to the root of marriage, and this is why. So you're happy. You're things. happy to contribute. Let me understand this. You are happy to contribute money to the political action committees of people who are having affairs with their mistresses while their wives are undergoing chemotherapy. You're happy to do that. I'm not saying that it's right. So if your I'm money is being used as so if your if your contribution is being used as hush money. Uh, to John Edwards' mistress, who he was stooping while his wife was having chemotherapy, you're telling me that's okay with you. What I'm saying is I don't think it's right, but also I don't think that everybody should keep... Well, then I, I, the, I think people have a right to know why John Edwards' mistress is still getting payments. And, again, this goes back to the root of marriage. What do you mean it goes back to the root of marriage? If John Edwards wasn't married, he wouldn't have a mistress? Is that what you're saying? No, I believe that because you are so anti-marriage that this is the reason why you keep... I'm anti-marriage, and that's why John Edwards couldn't keep it in his pants? You know... Because I'm anti-marriage. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Can I ask you something, I'm asking you something. Is the reason John Edwards can't keep it in his pants because because I'm against marriage? Uh, yeah. If I was a, if I was pro marriage, would John Edwards keep it in his pants? I believe if you're pro marriage, you probably wouldn't be. If I was pro marriage, yes or no, would John Edwards be keeping it in his pants? One has nothing to do with the other. I'm asking you. Then just say no. No. Okay, so it has nothing to do with me, then, does it? Okay. Well, can I can I say this? Now, it, isn't that right? It has what you just said was wrong. It has nothing to do with whether I'm pro marriage or anti marriage, does it? Well, can I ask you a question? Isn't now? that right? It has can nothing to do with whether I'm... Well, after we're done dealing with this part of the conversation, you can go to the next part of the conversation. Isn't it true that the last thing you said was false? That that it has nothing to do with whether I'm pro or anti-marriage. John Edwards was going to F Riel Hunter regardless of my opinion about marriage. Isn't that true? One has nothing to do with the other. You're Is afraid. it true that I'm right? And you're wrong, correct? Because earlier you were trying to blame it on my attitude towards marriage, but it really had nothing to do with my attitude towards marriage, did it? Yeah, but I wasn't trying as to... You just, as you just admitted. As you just admitted, it. it had nothing to do with my opinion about marriage, did it? I was trying to generalize... John Edwards was going to have an affair no matter what I think, right? It, if it, yes. John Edwards was going to have hot monkey sex at the Beverly Hilton Hotel or wherever he met her. And in Santa Barbara and wherever other places he went, John Edwards up. was going to do this simply because he felt like doing it, not because of what Tom Likas' opinion is of marriage. Because he's a political figure, you keep bringing it up. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I'm bringing it up because it obviously annoys you when I bring it up. Can I ask you a 
question now? Your Go dad, ahead. in the 40 years that you, you that, or however long your mom and dad have been married? My mom and dad have, have been deceased now uh, for 13 years. Okay, has did, did you know of, has your dad ever cheated on your mom, ever? I don't know. Probably not, right? More than likely not? Uh, no, I suspect that it did happen once, but uh, like many parents, uh, my parents didn't talk about it with us. Uh, again, though, I believe your mom and dad should be the poster children for a successful marriage. And even if he did cheat, they stayed together, they worked it out, they probably got counseling or went to church and, and got through it, and nobody dragged your dad's name through the mud. And, yes, but and you will recall, and this is why it's, here's why it's relevant. Here, all kidding aside, here's why it's relevant. It's because when John Edwards was running for the Democratic nomination, he wheeled his wife out there at a press conference, and he used her. He said that she wants me to quit the campaign. I, I, I want to quit the campaign, but she won't let me because she's that good a wife and we have that good a marriage. And he used her, had her speaking on his behalf in the meantime while he was banging somebody else on the side. You know, if he just never brought up the existence of his wife, I wouldn't care what he does personally. I care about it because he tried to use his wife's illness as a way of showing what a good guy he was. When in reality, he's not a good guy at all. He's a schmuck. He is a good guy. He's done a he lot is of not good. a good guy. He's, he's a, a schmuck. Good he's, a sh he's another slimy attorney who goes out there and files lawsuits against people, some of them frivolous, and he's a schmuck. It's people like you in my that are going to death of family and marriage in this country, you well, I, 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 I'm not out there having affairs while my wife is undergoing cancer therapy. Uh, the people who are anti-family are people who their wives are in the hospital dying while they're out getting laid somewhere else. That's the death of family, son. Did you disappear? Tom like it. Who's that? 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Like it. I've been listening to you for about, say, eh, give or take a year. I dumped my girlfriend the day I listened to you. I am single, 22, no credit cards in a girl's name. I am a partner in a great firm. I'm making great money. And I'm getting more ass than, how do you say, a toilet seat. The Tom Like It Show. Yes, it's the Tom Likas Show. Indeed it is. Coming to you from Dallas. At 1-800-5800-TOM. All these people writing in to say that I'm... I'm grammatically incorrect. I'm sorry. I hate to disagree. It's in a commercial. It's real. Well, Olga on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> well, I'm saying hello. How are you? Great. Can you hear me okay? My phone's being a little strange. I hear you. Okay, great. I was calling in regards to a conversation that you had with a gentleman yesterday who was living with a single mom and her five-year-old child. Um, basically, you know, I've I've been listening to your show actually for only about three months now and I have a hard time because sometimes I get very upset by the things you say and then sometimes I can't help but agree with you because you're very, very dead on about so many things, so it's great. Anyhow, what I was curious about as being a single parent, I just wanted to know why is it that you always have such a difficult time with male callers that call and are dating single moms? Because they run the risk that those single moms will procreate again and make those guys uh, responsible for progeny they don't want. Also, because in not all cases, but many cases, these guys end up having to support the children of other men, which is not their responsibility. Right, right. Okay, I understand that. So basically, you know, there are, I mean, I, I know you... Obviously, you know that there's exceptions to every rule, so you're not saying, basically, that no guy should be dating any single mother. I am saying that guys should not date single mothers because the exceptions to the rule are few and far between. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. You may be the exception to the rule, but most aren't. Okay. Okay, because, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, you know, 
I, I do know a lot of single, like, moms that are self-supporting and have successful lives and aren't looking for a guy, like myself, for example. I'm not yeah. saying they're looking for a guy, but when a guy gets into that nexus, what ends up happening is that he ends up having to pay and having to have child care responsibilities. Not if the mom of the child is already providing for that child. I'm but telling you, I've been there myself, and I've seen it up close. I've been there as well, and I've never... And suddenly, the single mom who was able to go to work and come home and get a paycheck and run her errands, suddenly she needs somebody to babysit. Suddenly, she needs somebody to watch the kids while she goes out. <laughs> Suddenly, she's tired on Saturday and could really uh, use me taking the kids to the movie so she can get a break. But why is that? She was doing perfectly break? well before I came along, and suddenly she had these needs. Okay. But why is that a bad deal? Ah, so you admit that that is the deal, which it is in most cases. Oh, no, what, what I'm saying, I agree with you that it definitely ends up becoming, you know, where the guy's hanging out with the kid and maybe taking out him, taking out the child for all these events that he'd rather not be doing. You know, that can happen. And I understand what you say about the financial responsibilities. What I'm, what I'm disagreeing with is the fact that, you know, if a couple meets and the guy genuinely cares about this woman and genuinely doesn't mind the kid factor, why is that such an issue to you? Uh, because like, there's plenty of other... Thing? There's plenty of other fish in the sea, and many of those fish have not spawned offspring. But there is also amazing fish in the sea that happen to have a child. You I, know I, I mean? don't and agree, because, because, you see, that guy will never be the priority in your life. And by the way, I'm not saying he should be, but he never will be. What's wrong with that? I, well, here's what's wrong with it. I want to be number one, and they, I can't be number one if you have kids. But do you real? But people that are really busy. I mean, I don't. You know, it's it's okay if you're not the top of the list. Many people I've dated have full lives and are also very busy people and whatnot. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, of course it's hard. There's those guys that have broken up with me because I'm they're not at the top of my list and they don't get to meet my kid and all that stuff. You know. Um, well, and that's another thing. There's many parents like myself that don't introduce their child to the guy that they're dating. But they, but the, you don't ever have to meet the child. There were days when somebody says, I've got tickets to a concert Thursday night. And you're like, well, I'll see if I can get a sitter. And then you can't. Okay. And so you have to call the guy. And you have to say, oh, well, sorry, can't get a sitter. So now the guy has to decide, do I want to just not go? Do I want to go by myself? Do I want to be like, like I'm gay and call some guy friend to go to this concert? Or do I want to go date somebody else? And the bottom line here is that having a monogamous relationship with a single mother is, is really not worth all the effort. I just don't see how that is any different than the woman that calls her boyfriend and he's at work. She has tickets and he says, you know what? Let me see with my boss. Let me see if I have to turn in this deadline tonight. He calls back and says, you know what, honey? I'm sorry. I can't make it. I have to stay at the office for another five hours. You have it's every right same. to dump that guy. I couldn't. If, if that's important to you, that that guy be available to you, I couldn't blame you for dumping him. Okay. So, so maybe then. Just like I'm telling me. these guys to dump you. just ridiculous okay fine i mean obviously you're you know you have your show and you have many men that agree with you in in many regards but the point is that i'm trying to make is you know it, whether or not i just think it's going to be an issue to men if they need to be the priority just like the woman that has to break up with a guy that's always busy it's because she needs to be number one she needs right. to be the priority and I think everybody has the right to, to feel that way if they do and to act accordingly. So then would it be so wrong for you to maybe reframe some of your statements slightly to say, like, look, if you're this type of person that needs this, this, and this, maybe you should stay away from the single mom? I don't know a single guy out there who's looking to take kids out to the movies on Saturday afternoon. I don't know a single guy out there who wants to pay for your kids $52 a head to go to a theme park on Saturday afternoon. I don't know. I mean, th these are guys who just simply want to get laid 
And because you're bogged down with kids, there's not a lot of competition among other guys for your attention. So they puss out and they do this stuff in order to get into your panties. You would be amazed how many of these guys are doing all these nice things for your kids. And really, they couldn't care less about your kids. They just want to get to the good stuff. But they don't have enough game to find chicks. Well, yeah, but I can understand if there's a girl that starts dating a guy and the kid is thrown into the mix immediately. But my No, son the kid is in the like mix eight. even if we never meet the kid. Because the kid is... Because the here's the thing. The there are kid, many no, nights wait, when... Wait, because, wait. because you can't do anything anytime. Nobody can. No one can do anything Some anytime. people... I mean, Some, come on. A Who lot of really people... I'm going to give you an example. Any, now, not that I would take a woman on a vacation or a weekend, but any woman that I date, because I don't date single mothers anymore, and I haven't in a long time, any woman that I would date could drop everything and spend a weekend with me in the Napa Valley, spend a weekend with me in Vegas. There's no asking around to see if uh, there's child care out there or anything like that. What women are you dating? There's a lot of women that have to work weekends. Like, there's women like myself that are in law school or whatever. I'm not dating them. I mean, you oh, know what? Okay. Th those are my booty calls. Aspiring attorneys are your booty calls? Yeah, you want to know something? They, they, they're only good for booty calls. I'll tell you what. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.